My name is Madeline Hoffman. I'm the director of New Jersey Peace Action. I went as an individual representing myself, but I've been a peace activist for 16 years. And I went because I felt that, I went to Syria because I felt that it was important to learn from the Syrian people themselves what was actually happening in Syria because there's been, there has not been enough of uh, or a focused enough response by the peace movement in the United States to what's been going on in Syria. And I don't, want, I don't, I can't add a whole lot to what Henry and Al have said, but I want to make this one particular point because I think it's very important and it gets to the core of everything that's going on. This is not a civil war in Syria. That's probably the first thing we heard and we heard it over and over again. It is not President Assad against his own people. It is President Assad and the Syrian people all together in unity against outside forces, outside mercenary forces, terror organizations, um, and I, the names change every day or every other day to try to protect their identity and maybe keep the connection between the country that funded it and that group kind of a little bit more nebulous, but there are groups, mercenary forces, supported by Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, the United States, and underneath it, Israel, the state of Israel. Um, and these outside mercenary forces are the ones that are terrorizing the Syrian people and are attempting to divide the Syrian people. Remember, I remember when the U.S. invaded Iraq uh, our organization was against it well before the invasion ever began. But once the invasion were o was over and the United States was setting up a government, we talked to many Iraqis who said, we're not Sunni and Shia, we're not Sunni, Shia, and Kurds, but the United States is trying to divide us that way. And we got exactly the same message when we, are, when we were in Syria. We are Syrians, as Henry said before, whether you're Christian, Muslim, or other, you're Syrian, and that's what, one of the things that's enabled the Assad government to withstand five plus years of this kind of outside attack. When Saddam Hussein, when it was time for the U.S. to unseat Saddam Hussein, after years of sanctions and two wars, he fell like that. When it was time, the United States decided time for Gaddafi to go, he fell like that. But when it was time, the United States decided it was time for Assad to go, he did not fall. And why? Because he has the support of 23 million Syrian people, and it was more before all these refugees um, were created and refugees were sent around the world. Um, the whole idea of regime change, the policy of regime change, if you will, it's illegal under international law. The United States has no right to do that. The United States has no right to decide for the Syrian people who their government leaders should be. And so I, during my time there in Syria, I felt that over and over again. Who are we? Why are we presuming to know what's best for the Syrian people? And the other part of this that I think people in the United States need to know is that the Assad government provides free health care free universal health care to everyone. It's, a mission, it's part of the government's mission. Free education for everyone from primary school all the way through even to university and medical school. And we met with one person, when we met with this one particular person from the nonviolent opposition, we asked him, well, tell us, what are some of your um, grievances with the Assad government? And he said, well, you, heard, you just heard that it costs about $50 a year for people going to medical school. We think that's too high. I and mean, he was being somewhat facetious, of course. But these are kinds, the kinds of policies that our citizens here in the United States are calling for, tuition-free college, universal health care. So the Assad regime, uh, no, the Assad government, excuse me, is in the business of doing this and providing this to the people. And without a doubt, even the nonviolent opposition parties who had issue with issues of democracy or corruption prior to 2011, everyone has thrown in 
thrown themselves in behind the Assad government because that's the best hope, the best bet for the Syrian people. And um, so lastly, I think I, w I want to echo what Henry said, that to a person, people asked that the sanctions be lifted because those sanctions, while we were there, somebody came and said a certain pharmaceutical company, which name I forget at the moment, was refusing to send uh, childhood immunizations from the United States to Syria, um, causing great harm to Syrian people. That's not, it's not how this country or any country should act within the world's community. Um, so the sanctions, as we've learned many times, do not hurt the governments they're intended to hurt, they hurt the people, and so they need to be lifted. We also heard that the border between Turkey and Syria needs to be closed so that this pipeline of um, trained groups, terror groups, is blocked and no more of those groups get into Syria. And finally, and this is where we come in as the United States, that the United States needs to stop supporting some of those outside terror groups, all the support for the outside terror groups needs to be withdrawn and allow the Syrians to fend for themselves. The Syrian Arab army is fighting for its life and fighting for the life of Syria. And we need, as a country, to acknowledge our role, what we are doing to cause harm and destruction to the Syrian people, and we need to stop it. And we need to stop it now, and that's why I'm – one of the reasons um, – one of the things I'll be saying over and over again since my return from Syria.